Serpents from the Garden of Eos, Portion 1. <laughs> Lord Set Goes to Hell Episode F The Setian Minoan Sea Empire of Atlantis The Setian Minoan Empire in the Middle Earth Sea was the Atlantis of later Egyptian and Greek legends. The main source for the legend of Atlantis is a dialogue of Critias written by Plato in the 4th century BCE. This text of Plato's is the origin of all later speculation about this fabulous lost empire of the sea, which, as Plato relates, was supposed to have been destroyed in a war between the Athens in Atlantis when earthquakes sank this mythical realm after its defeat by the Athenians. In the Critias, Plato relates the known mythic details about Atlantis by using the character of Critias who supposedly has been fascinated by the mythic legend ever since his reading of a family heirloom scroll written by his grandfather, Solon. Solon learned of mythic legends remembered by the solar priests while he was traveling in mainland Egypt. They told of a mighty sea empire that existed beyond the pillars of Hercules, an extremely wealthy and powerful empire that had perished and disappeared beneath the waves. Atlantean Timeline 15,000 BAS to present, showing the Egyptian first dynasty at 5000 BAS and the two warring kingdoms that Egypt split into Atlantis and Theban Egypt. This empire had once flourished and ruled the Middle Sea from Spain to the Tyrrhenian Sea west of Italy to the coast even of Egypt itself. The Sea Empire of Atlantis 3600 BAS showing Atlantis in dark red, the Atlantean colonies and allies light red, and the former homeland of the Setia Minoans in dark blue in Lower Egypt. The Atlanteans, says Critias, recalling the myth, had once been very prosperous and powerful with an enormous thalassic kingdom preserved by the gods. Their prosperity, however, it all ended with war, earthquakes, and deluge in the dim past some 9,000 years ago when Zeus became angered at their corruption and pride of power, in effect allowing the Athenians to defeat them and causing the seas to submerge their island home. The myth of Atlantis relates the history of the Setian Minoan Empire of the Sea, 
with much distortion of the real details that is likely caused by Solon himself, the source for the myth and the antiquity of the history within it. The Egyptian priests of Solon's era still had a historical recollection of the island empire's existence on Crete, and they knew of its destruction and great war that involved the Athenians, though they had forgotten, or simply lied, about which side of the war the Athenians were on. And, then perhaps, it may have been Solon himself who made the Athenians the antagonists of the Setian Minoans. The real history, of course, is that the Athenians and most other Greek cities, excepting a few traitorous ones, such as Thebes and Troy, were either allies or colonies of the Setian Minoans such as the former Gnosian colonies of the Achaean cities in the Argolid. The enemy of Gnosis in the fourth great war between the moon and the sun had been the mainland Egyptians from the southern deserts near Luxor and Edfu. The allies of the southern Egyptians from the mainland have been the new friends of Ramesses the Great, the Hittites with their kingdom in Anatolia. Line Gate of Hittite Atusa. Line Gate of Atusa Photographic Restoration. The Hittites with their kingdom in Anatolia. Pyramid Ramp of Hittite Hattusa. Sphinx of Hattusa. Sun God of Hattusa. Luvian Hieroglyphics of Atusa Shupi Uliluma Ruler of Atusa Bowls of Hittite Atusa The real war that had caused the destruction of the Setian Minoan Sea Empire had been the fourth and final war between the kingdoms of the moon and the sun. The earthquakes and deluge the Egyptians told Solon about had happened at 1650 BCE, a few hundred years before the final Armageddon of the war's last campaigns, not after the war and 9,000 years ago, as the Egyptian solar priests claimed. There was a great natural catastrophe that caused much widespread destruction to the sea empire of Atlantean Gnosis and this had been the volcanic eruption at Thera that had entirely destroyed that island of Setian Minoans. The eruption of the Theran volcano on the present day island of Santorini, Thera was later renamed Santorini, caused tremendous damage in the entire eastern Mediterranean and especially on Crete and the other colonial islands of Gnosis in the Aegean Sea.
enormous tsunami waves and thick layers of volcanic ash must have caused a huge amount of devastation to the island empire since its principal member cities were in this area either in the islands or along the coast the effects of the volcano eruption with its destruction of an entire island and submergence of a large part of it must have caused a substantial decline in the Minoan Sea Empire's economic and military strength, not to mention much loss of life. It may be that the catastrophic eruption started a period of decline that eventually had the result of the Seti Minoans losing control over Lower Egypt once again, since the Cretan 15th dynasty of the Hyksos could only remain in power there for some few generations after the disaster. And the decline of Gnosian power did not seem to end after the disaster of Thera and the loss of Lower Egypt, as once mighty imperial capital of Gnosis itself fell to invaders from Egypt in the next century at approximately 3400 BAS. The Egyptian invaders did not stay, however, and the Setians of Gnosis once more resumed their traditional leadership position in league with their former Mycenaean colonies in Hellas, which eventually prepared the volatile situation and had its culmination in the fourth and last great war between the moon in the sun. The mythic history of Atlantis as given by Critias in Plato's dialogue is a version of the Atlantean myth known to Solon and translated by Solon into the language of the Athenians. Critias claims that this was done so that the Greeks might be able to understand the foreign names and terminology within the myth. Plato is then making a new Greek myth based upon Solon's recollections of an Egyptian legend given him by the priests of the sun. Critias is relating the tale written down by Solon and translated by him into Greek language and myth. The myth then, as given by Plato in the Critias, has been most likely garbled up some by Plato, Solon, and the Egyptian priests. Embellishment and exaggeration of some of the details should also be an expectation. With these factors in mind, the translating, the garbling, and the exaggeration, as well as the acknowledgement that some details may have been intentionally changed for nationalistic or religious reasons, it still is possible, even at this great distance in history, to garner some important facts about a real Atlantis as it existed on the Setia Minoan island of Crete. An important first detail is given by Critias 
at the start of his mythic tale. Critias says that this Atlantis was from beyond the pillars of Hercules and was at war with Athens and those other nations within the pillars. Most everyone, including the Athenians, have assumed that this is to designate that Atlantis was located somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean past the Straits of Gibraltar. This was not the original idea as told to Solon though. The Egyptian priests were not speaking of the pillars of Hercules at Gibraltar at all. Instead, the Egyptian priests of the sun were probably referring to the pylons of the sun god Horus. Mainland Egypt was, for these priests, entirely within the pylons of the sun, the pylons of dawn and sunset. Solon either misunderstood the Egyptian priests, or he may have intentionally changed the myth a bit when translating it into Greek terminology. What the Egyptians were figuratively saying in religious terms was that Atlantis was positioned in the sea beyond the coasts of mainland Egypt. Atlantis was outside of mainland Egypt, somewhere in the Middle Sea. Atlantis was the lower Egyptian exiled Setian dynasty of the Keftiu, with its capital at Gnosis on Crete. Keftiu, Setian Minoans, bringing gifts to Pharaoh. Serpent headband. Minoan Riton vase. Minoan Riton vase. Minoan kilt dress. Keftiu, Temple of Ramses, Abydos. 19th Dynasty Blue Lotus Blue Lotus equals Lower Egypt Kefthiu Foreign Land Glyph Even the Greeks of Solon in Plato's day didn't remember their complete history, either the historical background of colonial Mycenae or that of Setian Minoan Crete itself. There were legends and bardic poems of the Achaeans and the Cretans and their exploits during the Age of Bronze before the destructions and the fall of civilization into obscure barbarism. But these historical tales were centuries old and preserved by poetic verbal memorization. Turns out that much had been entirely forgotten due to the drastic reduction of population, the lack of writing after the war, and the lapse of centuries. Black Ship Sea Raiders of Atlantis Gold Mask Mycenae 36th Century BAS Bull Riton Mycenae Ariadne The history of whence they came, or how it was that they got there, had been forgotten. The myths and tales told by the dramatists and the poets were like a dreamy memory 
almost remembered but unclear in their details and substantial links. The sense of them combined, though, never quite enough to bring back a full recollection. That is, until something was jolting enough to stir the deep collective unconscious. A recovery of the essential dissimilarity existing between night and day and the gods of the moon and sun between Lord Dionysus and Apollo. Friedrich Nietzsche 1869 Bacchus Caravaggio 1596 The remainder moves back into its place. The many centuries of bright scorching daylight are relieved once more by the memory of an empire of night, exuding a fresh and foggy drift of air from the cave damp depths of prehistorical Natura. Pharaoh Akhenaten as a Sphinx, Amarna 3350 BAS. Tholos Temple Tomb of Agamemnon, Mycenae, 3300 BAS. No wonder Endymion slept languorously in dream on the verge of its mossy crevice. Selene and Endymion at dawn, Andre Durand, 1978. The labyrinthine passage leads into the goddess womb of rebirth following the tomb still silence of slumbering eons. Pyramid and Labyrinth of Amenemhat III, 12th Dynasty. Many rocky corridors and chambers fall upon another into the dark black other of nothing outside the world. There is an essence of existing somewhere, but not knowing wither. All the while there is a knowing of something near and only beyond the perceived by a breath of air off the cool rocky grotto the surface of earth. Goddess New The left path through the garden leads back to its beginning at the start of human existence. There is a great roar of subterranean waters over a cliff into a gulf abyss of nothing below. Night is infinite. One still can't see the bottom or the other side without the magics of ancient guidance, though there is a sense that something else is.
Maybe this is why the portal doorways to the beyond were placed behind the altars of the Maltese temples. Was it a religion of the very mystery of death? The thought always recurs that any knowledge more than this is forbidden to us. Pylon Altar, Tarxian Temple, Malta, 7th Millennium, BAS. The portals or pylons of the Maltese temples show that the builders of these megalith ossuary circles were of Egyptian descent and were somehow of a party with the northern nocturnal dynasty. Tholos Temple Tomb, Mycenae, Hellas, 3600 BAS. Step Pyramid of Zoser, 3rd Dynasty, Saqqara, 4650 BAS. So, when the Egyptian priests of Heliopolis told Solon that Atlantis was beyond the pillars of Hercules, they were referring to their own pillars of the sun upon the borders of the Egyptian day. They also told him that Atlantis took its name from the royal house of its rulers, the nocturnal dynasty which ruled it. Solon translated this name by using the Greek myth of Atlas, who was a god who held the Earth's sphere upon his shoulders and did so through all eternity due to a trick played upon him by Heracles. Horns of Night Dynasties of Kronos Kronos with the three goddesses of Atlantis Demeter Nu, Rhea, Serpent of Persephone, Dove of Rhea, Kronos, Gold Lion Riton of Rhea, Mycenae, 36th century BAS. If Heracles was in fact the par excellence, horn hunter of the sun, a Horus, who might Atlas have been in Egyptian religion? The Egyptian god Shu, god of the air, the Egyptian goddess Tefnut, goddess of dark waters, Heriseph, the fertility god of the lake and the Nile grain fields.
Most likely, he was Shu, the Egyptian god of the air, who separated Nu, night, from Seb, the earth god, during the daylight hours by holding the night sky aloft. During the evening, he relaxed his upraising hold upon Nu, allowing the night sky and earth to unite in a love embrace. Shu was then the primordial Egyptian god of the air and fire and creative love energy, the Eros of Greek myth. Compare the Greek word for the air, air, with the Greek word for love, Eros. The Greek god Eros was worshipped in totem form as either the fire or the phallic chromatic. Chromatic of Shu Eros. Chromatic of New Nix. Shu The Atlantis of Greek myth was the sea kingdom of Shu or Eros in Egyptian mythic legend that is before it was transformed into the similar Greek myth of Atlas by Solon's translation. Shu was the atmosphere of air between Nu and Seb, or the night and earth. Shu, or Eros, was the cavern entrance hearth, or fire. Pillar of Kronos, Mycenae, 3300 BAS, Rhea, Kronos, Nu, Zagreus, There were many outstanding features of Atlantean architecture though one of the most indicative was the Atlantean taste for using red ochre to paint temple walls and columns. The Greek words for ochre were okros and orichalcon, both words referring to an iron oxide clay used since the start of human history for producing red pigment. The earliest use of red ochre in Europe was made by Cro-Magnon humans to paint cave walls during the Paleolithic, some paintings of which date back to 30,000 BAS. Party of Cro-Magnons Cave of Swimmers Fresco, Upper Egyptian, Libyan, Sahara. The word okros is the Greek word for ochre, and the Setian Minoans always painted their columns red with red ochre. So, the column of Shu, which could be thought of as the red column of Seb or Set, came to be called the Okros column from its red ochre color. And, eventually, this distinctive red column 
of the Cretans came to be known as the Kronos column of Eros Shu, because of the Okros red paint used upon it. Temple of Heriseph and Heracleopolis. Map of Lower and Middle Egypt. Memphis, Aornos Cavern, Lake Moeris, Heracleopolis Magna. Red Granite Column of Ramses II, Temple of Heriseph, 3250 BAS. Map of Lower and Middle Egypt, Aornos Cavern, Lake Moeris, Border Cities, Heracleopolis, Hermopolis, Hermes equals Eros equals Shu. Kronos, Eros, Shu, gave his name to the capital of the Setian Minoans, and the Sea Empire of Night was known thereafter as the Gnosian Empire. Atlantis, the Sea Empire of the House of Atlas, was an Egyptian terminology, the House of Shu, or the House of Nu and in Cretan later speak was called the house of Kronos or the house of Eros. Later this was changed through usage to simply be Gnosis. Eros and Psyche Spencer Stanhope 1880 Goddess Nu Nix, Atlantis, Psychodes, 4300 to 4800 BAS. Plato mentions the Atlantean or Gnosian use of oricalc at several places in the Critias. First, he says that oricalcon, or okros, ochre, was mined at many locations on the island. After describing the geography of the island and the situation of Gnosis in a large plain below encircling mountains all around, as well as the structure of its harbor facilities within a series of man-made circles, Critias begins the summary of his Atlantean description with a picture of the capital city's Temple of Poseidon. Atlantis Temple of Poseidon The temple is made of gold and silver and ivory with its outside adorned entirely in silver besides the fact that silver is the metal most closely associated with the moon and ivory was attainable only by way of trade with Egypt, there is another most important feature of its decoration. 
Lorion Silver Ore Refining Facility. Map of silver mines near Sunion and Lorion. Elephant on the Savannah. Ivory Elephant Tusks. Inside the Temple of the Sea God is an enormous statue of the God of the Deep aboard his chariot pulled by six winged horses. The statue is of great height reaching the roof and surrounding the god as further adornment are the 100 Nereid mermaids of his water realm, each riding a dolphin. Although the Atlantean worship of Poseidon is a vital characteristic of the mythic sea empire that agrees perfectly with archaeological artifacts of both Crete and Thera, there are other equally persuasive details of the legend given by Critias that make Setian Minoan Gnosis an almost exact correlation for the Atlantis of Solon and the Egyptians. Poseidon, Ghent, Belgium. Mermaid and Starfish. Before that, though, there is the worship of Poseidon at Gnosis, which can be shown by artifacts such as the pillar columns of the sacrifice chamber within the Gnosian palace, which were inscribed with both the Labries of the Terran horned god and the trident of the nautical horned hunter of the sea. Labries and Trident Pillars Subterran Sacrifice Chamber The Palace of Minos at Gnosis Sir Arthur Evans, 1935 This when combined with the Cretan artistic love of undersea frescoes such as the dolphin fresco and the serpentine octopus fresco displays a definite worship of the sea god which is without doubt when the additional mention of Poseidon in the Linear B archives is also considered. Dolphin Fresco, Gnosis Goddess Rhea Fresco, Throne Room, Pylos Linear B Chart, Michael Ventress Linear B Tablet, Pylos Poseidon Octopus Vase, Mycenae The Setian Minoans then worshipped the Horned God of the Sea as a variation of the Horned God of the Moon and the hunt. Zagreus having another form that was the lord of the sea in his role as the bull of the sacred hunt. This is where comes the myths such as Europa's 
elopement with Zeus in the form of a sea swimming bull and the myth of Pacify who didn't mate with a bull by the seaside on Crete and gave birth to the Minotaur and Pacify was queen at Knossos later becoming a sea goddess as well. Pacify and the sacrificial bull of Poseidon. Europa and Zeus in the form of a bull. Critias says that Orichalcon, Orichalc, was a decorative material used in the adornment of Poseidon's temple. Orichalc was a type of fabled mineral supposedly used by the ancients to provide a golden color for painting. Orichalcon, though, was also a figurative term for the more familiar Okros. The Greeks, what today is called red ochre, a red pigment used widely and popularly even by modern painters to produce a red, rust like shade. Red ochre is the exact shade of red used by the Setian Minoans to paint their distinctive style of columns. Orichalcon and Okros are the same mineral iron oxide mineral pigment found in clay soils. The Atlanteans then used this red ochre to paint the inside of their temple to Poseidon. The walls of the temple were a dark shade of red exactly like the Setia Minoan columns used so much in the building of Gnosis. Serpentine Octopus Fresco of Atlantis The Critias is an incomplete dialogue in Plato's description of Gnosis and its sea empire ends rather abruptly in mid-thought with Zeus pondering the wicked coveting caused by the island's debased degeneracy from the very heights of its once divine wisdom. The Critias ends at this point, but in the preceding sections to this one, Plato has his character supply the reader with a sketch of the Gnosian nomarchs and their wise rule of the empire's ten regions, a wisdom brought about by reverent worship of their gods Poseidon and Night. Poseidon, Horned Hunter of the Sea Nu, Creatrix Goddess of Night The Gnossians are ruled by ten nomarchs who govern their districts and regions as subordinates to the pharaoh of night. They meet together every four or five years to discuss affairs of empire and during these meetings they have certain celebrations and religious observances. The meetings of these rulers start with religious rites of bull sacrifice made individually by each of the nomarchs for Lord Poseidon, the horned hunter god who rules the sea, with 
with his trident spear. Pharaoh of Night. Atlantis, Bull Leaping Fresco. The meetings are held in the Temple of Poseidon with its enormous statue of a sea god. The walls of the temple are painted a deep rust shade of red, the color of dry blood and becoming creation. Most of the temple's gilded adornment and decorative trim is done in silver, the precious metal of the moon. Sacred bulls of the deep wander freely through the silvered halls and reddened corridors of the Sea Grotto Sanctuary. A hundred Nereid mermaids surf over the waves around the Titanic god riding their dolphin horses of the sea. A mermaid of Atlantis riding her dolphin horse by moonlight in the middle earth sea. Poseidon is master of the aquamarine every living creature which swims or scampers in its sea and depths of liquid first generation. Lord Poseidon Nature is the boss. Lobsters of Poseidon's Briny Deeps At the center of the long colonnaded temple was an altar and hearth before the god where the nomarchs made sacrifice of the aquatic bulls freshened the Ogros column of Kronos with their blood. The rounded offering pit of fire lay between the horned altar and Ogros column of darkened, blood-soaked red rising upwards near the god. Altar of the Horned God of the Sea Across column of Kronos. Each of the nomarchs chose a sea bull from those wandering the labyrinth of the great halls, and after hunting the creature with his trident spear of silver, the expiring beast was brought to the altar of horn. Here upon the rough stone of earth, the princes made their own rite of sacrifice and offered the meat to the fire of Kronos. Pacify with Bull of Poseidon, Gustav Moreau, Silver Trident, Horns of Night. Each of them, while doing so with their rights, made sure to save a large draft of the blood for the Kikions 
mingling mixture in a large brimming vase that was filled with wine and inscribed with the spiral coils of the serpents. This potion of wine and blood with the flower of corn was to be drank during the later ceremonies at the black hour of darkness. Pomegranate elixir prepared in serpent vases. The goddess Nu, standing between the border pillars of Shu. The remaining blood from the horned beast was cast into the fire to quench the thirst of Kronos before the long evening of erotic becoming had its start. Fire of Kronos in the fields of the serpent. Kromlech pillar of Kronos in a Tholos tomb. The nomarchs, after they let their blood libation, made sure to freshen the sacred column of Kronos from their silvered vases of living water, and especially whereupon the Okros pillar, the ancient founding oracles, were written in the glyphs of the goddess Nu. Priest pouring a blood libation at an altar column. Linear A hieroglyphics of Atlantis. Following upon the rites in the Temple of Poseidon made by the ten princes of the empire's many several regions, they did depart to the banquet halls and celebrations where the noble comrade citizens of the Middle Sea did await them before the mysteries had their start. Gnosis party goers arriving. A gypsy witch fortune teller at the party. These culminating rituals of the goddess Nu and her serpent daughter of the corn were held after dark when the embers from the sacrificial fire of Kronos had dimmed to fiery ashes. Priestess of Nu making the Kromlech sacrifice. Sacrificial bonfire before the rock of Kronos. After the banquets were held and those gathered had severally come together into the great pillar theater, they were shown several mythic schemes and choral dances by mass devotees of the serpent god of wine. Stairway to the theater of Gnosis. Drama before the Kromlech altar and rock of Kronos.
the dramas of Natura having been shown Pacify and the Bull Gustav Moreau 1880 Monitor with Captured Solar Standard As a cultic revelation for the noble attendees. Nature is boss. Who had already partook of the psychedelic Saturnine potion of the flower and pomegranate. Saturnine pomegranate potion. The black and cyan robed and masked audience betook themselves to know the greater mysterious. Descendants of Lord Set Fear not the Reaper The greater mysterious in the subterranean rock circles of cavern tombs. The Thelosian crypts of death's dark serpent goddess. Subterran rock circles of cavern tombs. The Telosian crypts of death's dark serpent goddess. Raven Hour of Darkness by Night. The Satanic Rites of Isis at the Pillars of Hell. of darkness by night. The satanic rites of Isis at the pillars of hell. Poseidon rules Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> 